Okay, we're here. Yay. All right. <laughs> we, we so apologize, everybody, but we had some serious technical difficulties and we still don't know why, but hopefully you can all um, see. Can you, are you able to see the, the screen right now, Sandy? Yes. And are you looking at the full screen or are you looking at? No, nope, uh, you're in presentation mode. I see liberate I on the left side. Liberate, yay. <laughs> okay, all right, so I'm going to give this a shot. We'll see what happens. I'm going to try to move the screen and then I'll do the introduction. Okay, and I'm going to mute myself. Okay, that don't don't go away though. Just I'm not in case. going away. <laughs> okay. Did you press okay, record? Yes, there we go. <laughs> okay, did. guys. Hello, everybody. It is, um, what day is it? <laughs> it's Tuesday. Wow, we messed up this. We're having some technical difficulties. I'm going to blame it on um, on uh, Apple because Mac just did an upgrade and all of us upgraded it. So we think that's what it is or it's Citrix, but we apologize. Joni, I Good didn't afternoon. upgrade. Oh, you didn't upgrade, so we can't blame them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good afternoon. And thank you all for being here today. And thank you so much for your patience. So my name is Joni Og, um, untechy person. And mm -hmm. on behalf of the travel professional community and travel professional news, I wanna welcome all of you to today's webinar and thank you for taking time out of your day to join us. We're really happy that you came here and that you've been patient enough to wait for us during for this amazing presentation. And today's topic is seven changes that will liberate your business in 2021. And our host today is Travel Planners International, and we're joined by the amazing Jen Lee, celebrating just four short years in the travel industry. Jen Lee, Travel Planner International's Vice President of Sales and Marketing, isn't shy about her obsession for guiding and leading today's entrepreneurial minded travel advisor community, especially in today's environment. What keeps Lee going is guiding passionate, hustling and driven entrepreneurs in the making who just plain get it. That's and her Pinot Grigio. Jen is a dynamite presenter, and we are so thrilled that she's with us today. She's also generously offering two 30-minute complimentary consultations as prizes for two lucky attendees who answer some questions that we will ask at the end of the webinar. So be sure and stay tuned and take lots of notes. Remember that you are all muted, but we welcome your questions and you can type in your questions at any time in the question area that you see on the right hand panel of your screen. And when Jen's presentation is over, we'll take as many questions as we can. So let's turn the microphone over to my friend Jen. And Jen, sorry about these glitches today, but we so appreciate you being here. No problem whatsoever. I'm always excited to be talking to people um, who are tuning into Travel Professional News. We, I dig it. Um, so y'all, guess what? Um, Joni is going to have to do that. She's the point. She's the clicker of my PowerPoint today. So if our timing's off a little bit, you'll forgive us. Um, happy end of 2020. I know I say this. Um, I'm sure all of us right now are just like, yes, dear goodness, please, let's end this year and let's get into 2021. And boy, has everyone business has changed over the year. And um, when I was prepping for this webinar, I always ask myself, you know, what is it that I think the travel advisor community really needs to hear right now? And it's it's not about unprecedented times. It's not about marketing. It's not about staying in contact with your clients. It's really, we're kind of past that right now, right guys? It's really going into 2021, your chance. Um, I feel like we're like a, a country being set free, liberation. It is your chance to liberate your business and to depart from what you know to be true and real. And that's a, a phrase that we've really been saying a lot around here at TPI. Um, we've had to sit down and say, okay, what we know to be true isn't necessarily true moving into 2021 or past 2021. Is there a new norm out there? What we what we thought to be real uh, decisions that we were making, and Joni, go ahead and press uh, the next uh, slide, please. Um, All right. What we thought yeah. to be, yay, <laughs> what we thought to be true and real might not necessarily be true and real any longer. And how? what are the, what are the changes that we're going to make um, moving forward, going into 2021. And that's what I want to share with you guys as travel advisors and agency owners. I want to share with you some of the things that we did here at TPI internally that I know will serve every small business owner really well. Go ahead to the next slide, Joni. So one of the very, and so I'm going to share seven ways, seven ways, and please make sure you take good notes because we ask good questions at the end. Oops. One of the things, okay. yep. Partner for impact. We're there. 
Okay, good deal. So one of the things we did at TPI was um, we started to take a really strong look at who our travel partners were. You might know them as travel suppliers. We call them travel partners. Who are we partnering with and what kind of impact did they make on our business? And I'm sure many of you who are dealing with cruise lines and um, certain tour operators are shaking their head up and down that um, the days of, oh, they give me the highest commissions or yeah, they've got a great loyalty program um, or they've got the easiest booking engine to work with. Those aren't necessarily what's important any longer. And we felt the same way. And at TPI, we did a thing, we cohorted our travel partners and we gave them rate rankings from like high impact, medium impact, low impact. And why were they such a low impact? How can we make them a higher impact? And for you, I challenge you to do the same thing. You know, you might be asking yourself, um, who should I really be kind of diving deeper with in 21 moving forward? And we would say that some of the characteristics that you should look for are partners who offer flexibility for you. Uh, that's one of the things a lot of our advisors like about working with TPI is we're very flexible. In other words, it's your brand, your business, your identity. Um, and we like to do business with travel partners who offer us flexibility. Partners who really walk with you walk alongside you, understand what you're going through. Um, partners who offer transparency, especially when it comes to communication. Um, who, who did that really well this year? Um, who is it and what are you expecting moving forward? You know, as a travel advisor or agency owner, you have every right to demand the type of communication that you need to be successful in partnership with that company. They want that. If you know sending a text message is better for your ability to um, gain pro promotions or to get the information, then by golly, they should have a program that allows you to receive stuff via text. Whatever that is, uh, you want to look for partners who are helping you maximize your efforts. Um, I always think about email marketing at this point, Joni. You know, we put together uh, grab and go emails for our advisors, and I love working with partners who say click, you know, here's the promotion and click here, 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 and here, or here are all the banners and the different sizes for you to be able to kind of like grab and go with, right? Totally. Makes it easy. Who, yeah. who, what kind of partner maximizes my efforts? Um, am I getting some exclusives with this partner? And then partners who you can sell with ease and excitement. Uh, ones that you get excited about picking up the phone and calling their headquarters or get excited about digging into their website or excited about learning about their new products. Um, the partners, uh, partnering for impact is probably the biggest change that we're going to see a lot of advisors make. Um, and at this time, I'd love to, um, you know, hear from anyone who's listening, you know, have you made changes to some of the travel partners uh, and affiliations that you've had? Um, Joni and I are in love with uh, Asta, right? We love us some Asta all day long. And Asta has done such a great job this year. You know, that's a partner that you should add to your to your partner bag. Uh, so moving into 2021, think about these five different criteria. And if you dump the partners that are not doing a good job for you, if you um, give yourself an opportunity to ask, you know, ask the deeper questions about who you're affiliated with as well. If you give yourself a chance to kind of be curious about what else is out there, you may surprise yourself. Um, I'd love to hear from anybody that's, um, you know, typing in have you done this so already? Jen, i think yeah. when it comes to them typing in because we got this little screen thingy bopper going on today oh um, you're not going to say that's it a tech, that's a technical no. term thing thingy bopper and sandy <laughs> is able to and we love sandy everybody we love sandy and sandy elson is on here and she can actually see the questions so she's okay, going to chime in when necessary okay Okay, okay, good deal. And we do have one agent who said we are changing who we recommend for travel insurance Oh, very good. Yes, there's a lot of good travel insurance partners out there. And um, oh, that's good. Yeah. You know, who who treated you right or who's got who's got the flexibility there? Who offers programs for you that gives you the flexibility to to um offer your clients unique opportunity, you know, unique experiences. So that's good. Good, good, good. Really well, good. I challenge I challenge all of you to kind of take a look at um who you're partnering with. And if you're not happy for one reason or another, depart from what you know to be true and real and ask those questions. All right, so the second thing I think you should do, and if you'll go ahead and click that slide for me. We're there. 
is the profitability plan. And I actually, I believe we've done a webinar with you about profitability, um, uh, Joni. So we'll have to go back and take a look at I it. I believe but, we did. Yeah, I think so. yeah. we did. It's quite some time ago. We'll have to go back and figure out where that was. Yeah, but if you guys email me, I will send you a link to that webinar as well as I will send you the profitability plan worksheet. Now is the time. December is your month. Um, and if you're listening to this and we're in March because you're going back and listening to old webinars, now is the time. March is the perfect time. Now is the time. It doesn't matter when you do it. But now's the time to actually sit down and say, how am I going to be profitable in the next 12 months? And believe it or not, gang, you can be profitable in the next 12 months. It is doable. But it does take a little bit of planning on your part. Um, one of the first things um, that I'm going to ask you to do, and this is kind of just highlighting uh, the entire profitability plan. I actually walk you step by step through six different areas for you to answer questions and then you'll know how to become profitable. But the very first thing is how much do you want to pay yourself? That is the very first question. In the next 12 months, how much do you want to make sure you're writing a check out of your business account to your personal account? You have to start with paying yourself. And Lord knows in 2020, many of us did not get paid. Many of you did not get paid. So ask yourself, what's that number that you want to pay yourself in over the next 12 months? And then stay on top of your numbers. And this profitability plan will walk you through it. I'm not going to have time to do it today. But know your numbers. Understand where you're spending your money. Um, understand why you're spending your money there. And again, question it. Um, look at different technologies that you're using. Again, back to your partners for impact. Partner with those who are able to maximize your membership fees because they include things. You're going to get a chance in this profitability plan to set budgets based on the next 12 months. So, you know, one of the things that we know to be true is that when uh, events come back or FAMs or your own self-guided FAM or when we are able to cruise again or whatever that looks like to you, you have to set a budget. You have to set a budget now. Don't wait until the opportunity's there and you saying, gosh darn it, I don't have the money. I want you to set that budget now. And then from there, you're gonna be able to identify the income goals needed to be able to kind of work your way back up. Meet all those budgets, know that you're spending money in the right places, paying yourself what you wanna pay yourself, and then you'll get a chance to set some sales goals and then hold yourself accountable. The, the travel advisors in our network at TPI that are still making money are people who pay attention to their numbers. Simple as that. They pay attention to their numbers and they hold themselves accountable. And as much as so many people say, oh, you know, it's tough out there, nobody wants to travel, that's an untrue statement. It's and actually, it's a lie. People do want to travel. TSA reported uh, that we had the highest number of people go through the TSA uh, during the holiday in a, in a year. And guess what? That's because people are traveling. So don't believe the lie that says nobody wants to travel. Maybe nobody in your realm wants to travel, so go find new people. But Give yourself a chance to be profitable. Tell yourself how much you want to pay yourself. Not a pipe dream, but an actual payment to yourself. And walk yourself I, through the profitability plan. Go ahead. I'm going to jump in for a second. I, I want just to share with this because this is so, so darn true. Um, because mm -hmm. all of us had to deal with this, you know, this year. In every kind of, every oh, yeah. walk of business, doesn't matter what it was. And we're not selling travel at Travel Professional News, but we're working with travel agents. But our business was obviously affected. And one of the things that we did is that Tom and I and Andy sat down and said, okay, what do we need? What do we need to live on? What do, you know, how do we get through this year and now we're looking at next year doing the exact same thing okay what do we need next year mm -hmm. but what I'm sharing is we learned a lot about ourselves we learned about a lot of things we didn't need in our business mm -hmm. um, and yeah. we learned a lot, you know and we, so we you know learned how to spend money differently and so I think everybody when you start to kind of look back on where you've been this last year and look forward to next year we might be making some different choices that are really going to help us out in our businesses Yep, absolutely. And the and the work that you put in today will pay off if something like this happens again. And we're going to talk a little bit about that um, a little later on in the webinar. But the work you put in now, and the reason why this is one of my, this is number two on my liberation list, is because once you know your numbers and you hold yourself accountable to them, you'll start meeting them and then you're liberated. 
like because then the fear isn't the thing that's got hold of your checkbook it is your it is your focus is what will have hold of your checkbook it is it is that force that you're putting behind all of your activities so profitability plan just email me there guys and i will send you uh, the worksheet as well as a link to the webinar that we know we did at some point i it was probably a year ago <laughs> yeah but we did i know we did though i know we did exactly now tip number three you're gonna have to fire yourself people <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm over it with you people trying to do everything yourself and one of the things that you're going to see in the profitability plan is that it, there is a budget there for you to hire somebody so if you say any of the following and i hope you have the whole screen up there if you say any of the following you know i really struggle with or i really don't like doing or I keep many meaning to do, fill in the blank. And I'd love for somebody to, to chime in with something I struggle with, social media. I struggle with email marketing. I really don't like doing confirmation calls. I really, I keep meaning to submit my sale. Still cracks me up in the host agency world. People forget to submit their sales. You know, if you find yourself saying those things, and Sandy, let me know if anybody's got anything in there. If you find yourself saying any of those things, then you need to hire someone to do those things. Now, that doesn't mean you have to hire a $60,000 a year employee. There are plenty of people out there right now that have been laid off or furloughed or their hours have been cut um, or their spouse's hours have been cut or they've been laid off and they're looking for a part-time gig. They're looking to be part of something. It might only be $10 an hour you can pay somebody. It might only be 50 bucks a month or $100 a month or something. Set aside a budget to hire somebody to do the things that you really should not be doing. Because Jen, travel advice, yeah, baby. Our first agent comment says she hates doing accounting. Yeah. <laughs> there Me you too. go. I do too. I I still haven't gotten my expense check from January and February. I just need to turn in my expense report and I'll actually get money. <laughs> oh, I'm calling it the Christmas Club. Um, and that just reminds me, it's still sitting there. It's literally oh. sitting right there. It's like $700 I'm not paying. I'm paying myself. So if you don't like doing accounting, you can even go to Fiverr. And there are people who will do accounting for you. If uh, you are with um, a host agency, ask your fellow advisors, see if you can share a bookkeeper, see if there's somebody who, you know, for 10 bucks an hour, for five hours, um, every other week will do the accounting for you. Find somebody to do it for you. A this college agent, student. This agent says, I hate data entry. And I'm yes. waiting for our new CRM to hire someone to do it. Oh, good. I don't know. She's a TPI advisor, but yeah, just hang tight, hang tight, just wait, <laughs> um, and then hire someone to put that stuff in and use that to put it to a spreadsheet and then you can upload it. But yeah, I mean, fire yourself with those tasks and duties and liberate yourself because what we've found is that everyone had to make drastic cuts in the beginning and rightfully so. And so we cut that, that extra person that used to help us. And then we took on all this extra work on top of the fact that we are now doing the work that we didn't like doing. So it's work on top of work on top of work and um, we're drained and retired. And so going into 21, you've got to find some money somewhere, borrow it from a neighbor, do something, give yourself a budget and give yourself 30 to 60 days to hire someone to do some of those things that you really shouldn't do. Because really where we need your energies and your brain and your emotion is in selling travel, is in curating experiences. So liberate your business and depart from what you know to be true and real, which is I'm broke gently. There's no way I can afford this. Uh-uh. Get cure, get creative. With constraints comes creativity. Get creative. You never know who might want to be helping you for piddling, maybe even no money. Might be somebody at home that's just like, I just I want to make sure I keep up my accounting skills. I'll do your books for free. You just don't know. So fire yourself and hire someone. So that's tip number three. All right, Joni, let's go to tip number four, which I we know are a there. lot of people are going to love. 
Fire your clients. Get rid of them. I'm done with these people. Who wants to get rid of those clients that um, have been calling you every third day looking for their refund? And you've told them, you know, time and time again, it's going to be at least six months. Now, mind you, a lot of travel partners have not really helped us at all. Uh, they haven't been very transparent with their communication. They certainly have been um, not good partners walking with us, but away from us when it comes to help. But in reality, you know who those clients are. You've always known who those clients are. And you know what? Now's the time to fire clients you don't want to do business with. Um, my first point here is no is a complete sentence. So if somebody says, hey, I, you know, I'd, I'd love for you to quote me on six different cruises, da, 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 your answer could always just be no. If somebody's asking you to um, respond to them on a Sunday at one o'clock and you're sitting in church, uh, the, the, the cell phone, you can turn that off or you can just say, no, this is not the time that you and I can talk. Um, no is a complete sentence. You do not need to justify it. We Part have two the, agents, yeah. Jen, we have two agents who said they have done it. One of them did it today and it feels good. really good. <laughs> yes, congratulations. congratulations. We're proud of yes. you. We're very proud of you. It's so true. So good for you. And you'll find you feel liberated. Uh, weight is lifted off of your shoulders. Because guys, going into 21, you got to have all the energy back that we had in 2019 and then some. Part of the things that I find that a lot of advisors um, reap the benefits of is when they finally start realizing that they have to take charge of the process in the very beginning. Those that are most successful are people who kind of walk their clients one, two, three, four, five, six, step by step through the process. You know, they have a good qualifying process and they say, okay, now that I understand more about what type of experience you're looking for, our next step together is going to be, I'm going to send you an email with two quotes. You're going to choose one of those two that looks best to you. And then from there, I'm going to need your credit card, da, 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 da. And they walk them through the process in the beginning. They take charge in the beginning. The more information you give in the beginning, the better off you'll be and the less number of clients you'll need to fire. If you find yourself constantly attracting the wrong client, then I say the best thing you could do is check your branding. And branding is really everything. It's not just what your business card and your logo and your website looks like, but it's the story that you're telling, the story that you're sharing, how what you're sharing. Um, if you're sending email after email with cruise deals and you're so frustrated because people are constantly shopping you for pricing, well, that's because that's all you're talking about is pricing. Your branding needs to align with who it is that you want to attract. And I love, um, and I'm sure Sandy and Joni, you've heard this before when you ask people, so who do you want to work with? And they always say, I want to work with somebody who values my expertise. Well, what does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. If you can say, I add value to your vacation, nobody knows what that means. But if you can say, hey, I help busy families, busy moms plan the most incredible seven-day family vacation without lifting a finger, now you've added value, right? So check your branding. Make sure your branding is speaking to the people that you wish to attract. If it's not, then you're going to constantly be firing clients or being dragged down with people you don't want to do business with. Um, so check your branding. And then um, one of the things that our, our TPI advisors do really well with is uh, they partner with other advisors. They say, hey, listen, if you've got a destination wedding, I'm a destination wedding expert. You know, feel free to send me that referral or, you know, I'll, we, we can work on it together. And quite frankly, if I've got anybody who wants to do FIT Europe, I have zero desire to do anything with that. I'm going to send those to you or we'll work together with that. Find other advisors who want to work with you or start building your team in those different areas so that when you do have clients that come that you're not super excited about, you've got someone you can kind of uh, pass them over to or hand them to. So that's that for firing your clients. Any other questions with that? Uh, we have one agent who must be a really terrific agent because she said, after firing clients, some are like bad pennies and they keep coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you know what? Nobody else wants to deal with them either. Now you get to set the tone. Here's how we're going to work together, Joyce. Joyce, moving it. forward, this is what we're going to do. Now, Joni, don't go through this uh, slide too fast. I'm not. Okay. I'm only okay, putting, I only have the, fr the first thing up, money, joy, joy measurement. That's all measurement. I got. Okay. 
Now, apparently somebody else either took my idea or I took their idea years ago and didn't realize it, but I have been living by the money joy measurements uh, for probably 20 years, 25 years. And it's in business, this is for business. In business, I always ask myself, does it make me money and does it bring me joy? And so go ahead and press uh, enter for one. Scenario one is it makes me money, but it doesn't bring me any joy, hit return. Well, that means what's the point? It's not sustainable. That's those clients that you don't uh, really wanna do business with. Yeah, maybe you make money, but you don't like doing it. What is the point? You're in business to turn your passion into profit. So that's not a good combination. Scenario number two, oh, it brings me joy, but I don't really make a lot of money. Well, my friends, that's called a hobby. That's not called a business. Just because it brings you joy does not mean that it's part of your business. So both scenario one and scenario two do not work. The only scenario that really works is when you say, yep, it makes me money and it brings me joy. Or you could say, yeah, it brings me joy and makes me money, either way. But it has to do both for it to be sustainable, for it to be worth your the work to wow ratio, I always like to say. Like, it's a lot of work, but it's not bringing me a lot of wow. Well, then what's the point? Why are you doing it? To liberate your business, if you start going back through all these points that we just went over, you get a chance to fire the people you don't want to do business with, attract the people that you do, hire someone to do the stuff you really don't want to do, ensure that you're making money while doing it because you're making smart decisions, and that you are partnering with people who have an impact on your business. So why screw it up in the money joy scenario, right? So it's got to make you money and it has to bring you joy. And I know that get, that's very controversial. I get a lot of advisors that say, well, I'm not in it for the money. Well, then I say, well, then you are, you've got a great hobby that might pay for your personal vacation and that's fine, but please don't call yourself a business owner because you're not. It has to do both. All right, I challenge anyone to challenge me. I'm I wouldn't win. think of it. <laughs> exactly. You are so right. The money, money joy measurements, my, my next tip. The next one, is scenario planning now. And Joni, you kind of talked about it a little bit at the beginning. This is something we did at TPI in April. We went back and as soon as we started seeing things were not going the way we wanted to go, we sat down and we did what we called scenario planning, which is we filled in the sentence, what will happen if travel partners no longer pay commission? What will happen if half of our travel advisors go out of business? What will happen if cruises don't sail for the next six months? We sat and we gave ourselves 10 to 12 different scenarios and we worked through them very quickly with solutions. And the beauty of this is most of this we haven't had to implement even though we haven't sailed in almost a year. But most of it we haven't had to implement because along the way we were able to make smart decisions because through the scenario planning, it showed us where our weaknesses were and where our opportunities were. And you have that chance as well. So I challenge you to say, what will I do if I don't get commission until June? And then it's, will I be able to pay my bills? How will I pay my bills? Will I still want to be in this business? What, how will my business look? What are the changes that I'm going to have to make with that? We have um, our number one advisor at TPI. Um, he has about 240 uh, travel advisors that work on his team, and they sell almost exclusively Carnival. And as soon as he started seeing things were not coming back quickly, he switched all of them over to all inclusives, and they're killing it. They're doing a great job because they know they're not going to get those commissions from cruises as quickly as they were used to. So now they're going to all inclusives. And you know what's going to happen? Next year, when cruises come back, they're going to have both skill sets. Their clients are going to be used to hearing about two different types of travel. And now they have more flexibility because now they're partnering with other people who can give them a different type of impact. But that's because he did a scenario plan quick. What happens if Carnival doesn't sail for a while? How will my business continue to thrive? The reason this liberates your business is because it's kind of like it's, I was going to use a weight, uh, a scale thing. I'm going to do it anyway because I weigh myself every morning. I don't know who else weighs themselves every morning, but I weigh myself every single morning. 
And there are days that I know I did not do good that day before, and I really don't look forward to jumping on that scale. So I used to just not jump on the scale, but you know what was still the truth? The weight. It didn't matter if I jumped on the scale or not. I weighed what I weighed what I weighed, right? And so now I jump on the scale so I keep myself in line because I'm doing the scenario. Oh, I just gained a half a pound. What do I need to do with it? It's kind of like not wanting to open up the bills when they come in the mail. Well, guess what? The money is still due. As soon as you open it up, it takes that unknown factor out of it. It takes that fear factor out of it. And then you go into solution mode. And so scenario plan now. Think about all the changes that you were able to make this year. And what are you going to do going into 2021? So plan those out. Ooh. Are you ready for the next one? I am, babe. Le I wish this was a live audience. I mean, they're I live. Know. I, mean, they're all I know. Alive, well, we are kind of live. Yeah, you're all alive. It's good to hear you. Um, my final tip is legacy planning. So you've done the scenario planning for what will happen if. Um, legacy planning is really sitting down and saying, why am I building this business? What am I building it to do? This is a standard question with an answer that most businesses, when they launch or they're halfway through or they see some sort of, um, not end, because it's not really about ending, but they see kind of a path, they start planning for their legacy. Am I building this business to pass down to my kids? Am I building this business to um, pass to a fellow advisor? Am I building this business to sell my customer database at some point? Am I building this business and I'm going to um, gracefully retire and start, um, you know, the last three years of my business, I'm going to send my cruise clients to this person, I'm going to send my land clients to this person, um, you know, what are you doing with your business? And you might still be 20 years away from it, but I think it's really important that at this time, while we're at this almost like blank slate, right, like all of our slates are kind of blank, we get a chance to kind of relaunch the business. And again, if you go back through all these things that I've just um, mentioned to you, the liberation points, you can you can go back through it and now you can kind of see the life cycle of your business. What does it look like moving forward? And set, I, I hate those like five-year goals, 10-year goals, more like go way out, like you've retired or you're dead or you're right before you're dead because you can't do anything once you're dead, but like go way, way out. And what is it that you hope your business, the legacy of your business is? I always like to like refer to things that might make a little more sense in everyday world, but you know, everyone in your town, you all have some sort of um, restaurant that's been there for a long time, mom and dad restaurant, and it's passed down from generation to generation or a hardware store or a cute little bakery or something like that, right? So think about that. Think about a business in your community that everyone's like, oh yeah, they've been here. I remember I sold a yearbook ad to them back in the 80s and they're still there, right? That's a business that has a legacy. You know, if you're gonna build a business and if you're listening to this webinar, you really do wanna build a business, you gotta start with what your legacy is. Where do you want, what do you want it to look like? And dream big. It doesn't mean, it doesn't have to be monetary. It just needs to be, is it a family-owned business? Is it, is, it, is it a business that serves your community for 35 years? And then how do you do it? And then go backwards, you know? That's your legacy. What are the scenarios that you need to plan out for now? Let's make some good decisions on what we do. It's gotta make us money and bring us joy. We've gotta hire, hire the right clients and fire the wrong clients. We gotta fire ourselves and hire ourselves and hire somebody else. We've gotta have a profitability plan and you got a partner for impact. And you really, honestly, guys, when the rubber meets the road, if you do all of these things, you will liberate your business. Joni, just the next slide, please. Okay, okay. You will liberate, you will liberate okay. your business. Yeah. Um, and 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 Joni, there's gonna be one more slide, but don't don't click it yet. I'm not um, because that's the end slide, and I don't know if you know what it looks like, but just don't do it yet. Okay, so okay. So you will liberate your business and, and you will get more curious. So I know we've got some time left. I'd love to open it up to questions. Any question, I don't care what it is. We could talk about vaccines. We could talk about cruise lines. We could talk about email marketing. But what is something that's bothering you right now in your business that you want some advice on? What, what point did I talk about that like hit home for you? 
Okay, Sandy's going to kind of manage that piece of it. And then yeah. when you're ready, I'll do your other questions for the prize. So you just let Perfect. me know. So, mm -hmm. Sandy, do we have any questions in there? No, nobody's questioning anything oh. except for wanting to get that CRM from you, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. It's coming, it's coming. TPI for sure. I'm excited. We're so excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, guys, listen, I know I've given you a lot of information. I want you to definitely email me and I'll send you the profitability plan and that webinar. Um, but just to show you that my money, wait, um, I speak my truth. I too liberated and go ahead, say, uh, Woo Jenny. Woohoo! Look at this. I too wow. liberated and I went from curls to straight hair because I said, we got to go into 2021 with a whole new attitude. And I wow. liberated, I departed from what I knew to be true and real, which is my natural curls. And um, everyone said, oh, you're known for your curls. And I'm like, well, I want to be known for my personality and my brain. <laughs> so um, as cute as I was with curls, I think I look even better with straight hair. I think so, you look gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Um, totally different. <laughs> Jen, we do have one question here. How do you start when you haven't done any business this year? Well, start with the profitability plan. I would say start with that first. And then I would then um, partner, choose your right partners, um, whether they be travel partners, host agency partners, consortia partners. Partner with some people who are going to help you along the way. And then be very, very honest with yourself. Answer these three questions. Who do I want to do business with? How do I want to serve them? In other words, what do I want to sell them? Is it, I'm, I'm into Europe, I'm into cruises, and where do they hang out? Who do I want to serve? How do I want to serve them? And where do they hang out? If you can answer those three, partner with the right people and give yourself a, a profitability plan and hold yourself accountable, start marketing, you'll be well on your way. Jen, Great one of our agents wants to know, how do you suggest we find other travel agents to work with? Um, well, I'm hoping you're part of a host agency. If you're not, you should be. Um, if you are with a host agency, I would reach out to my host agency and say, here's what I'm looking to accomplish. They should be able to connect you with other travel advisors. If you're not with a host agency, um, you're really missing out on probably the best of everything that's out there in the travel industry from a support and community standpoint. So um, I would suggest you contact host agencies. You're welcome to contact, contact me here at TBI. Good suggestion again. <laughs> Another agent, I know you've spoken about this, you could talk about this for a week. Where are agents finding new sources of clients? Oh yeah, my God, please go back and listen <laughs> to some of the webinars. Um, you know, they're finding new clients um, through word of mouth and that means you have to pick up the phone and call your uh, your clients and say hey listen I know you're not ready to travel it would mean I still love my travel business it would mean the world to me if you hear of anyone that's looking to travel that you would pass my information on another way would be uh, leveraging LinkedIn which I know I just did a webinar on that so not too long ago leveraging LinkedIn to build your business and your profile uh, Facebook groups um, local events um, stop emailing your clients and thinking if they're not ready to travel they're not ready to travel that's okay don't beat them up and don't ignore them but move on millions of people are looking for travel advisors this question kind of relates to that one um, this agent said I have planted seeds with a new lead magnet for river cruises and have grown my email list by over 400 in the last five oh, wow. months but oh, I've, had, awesome. I've had no inquiries, even for late 2021 or 2022. Do I just need to be patient? No, you need to be more aggressive. So first off, congratulations. You need to look at what you're sending in those emails. And you are welcome to reach out to me. I'm happy to take a quick look and tell you what's, what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. If, you, if this is the first time you've ever heard me speak, I'm a very straightforward, kind individual, but I'll tell you exactly what to do very quickly. Um, you probably are not um, asking them. Um, you're probably not enticing them to um, cruise. Some, there's something you're not doing right, but first off, congratulations on building your email marketing list by 400. That's huge. It's your follow-up. Something's happening. 
there's probably a disconnect between the lead magnet and on what you're providing them. Good information. Okay. That's it for the questions for now, but Jen, you'll be very happy when you read these comments because so many of our agents are saying what a fantastic presentation this is and what a great oh, presenter you are and how wonderful you look in your new hairdo. <laughs> it's really about the hair people. I told all my friends, I'm give me a whole week just to brag about my hair and then I'll stop talking about it. But I need a whole week. I'm only on day two. So, okay. uh, <laughs> well, it's worth it. So, and I want to just, you know, we'll go ahead and do the questions in a minute. Before we finish yeah. up, I just want to say um, thank you to everybody for being so patient with our little uh, technical difficulties today. I think uh, hopefully you got, you feel okay about the information, even though it was a little bit jagged and me getting it out. But it was great to have you all here and I, I do appreciate you being so patient. Uh, Jen, do you want me to do the questions? Let me to name the yes, ask the question. For it. Okay. Yes, please. So remember everybody, we're giving away two, or Jen is giving away two consultations, 30 minute consultations with her. And then after you heard this today, I know you see the value in that, and that in itself is like, I hope you get this right. We're gonna pick the fifth person, Sandy. Sandy's gonna help me with this. The fifth person that gives us the correct answer. I've provided the correct answer to Sandy already, although she probably knew it anyway. <laughs> Number one question. What is the name of the plan that will help ensure you meet your personal financial goals? Okay, the name of the plan, and I'm going to take the fifth correct answer. Okay, we have a winner. Let me just write it down. So hold on just one second because this goes so fast. Okay, the correct answer is the profitability plan, and our fifth correct uh, agent to write it down is Lori Marshall. Lori Marshall. Oh, hey, Lori, congrats, babe. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, congratulations, Lori. Okay, we got one more chance at this. Be listening, everybody. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Drum roll. Okay, complete Get this it. sentence. Depart from what you know to be. They have to be paying attention to know this mm -hmm. one. <laughs> Okay, answers are coming in. I'm just counting. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give it another moment. It's the suspense. Okay, well, we did not have as many people answering. <laughs> that was a tough one. one. Uh, we that did was a have, tough one. Yeah. It was. And we did have four correct answers. And Jen, I don't know how you want to handle this, but the fourth correct answer was typed in by Lori Marshall. Oh, my oh goodness, my Lori. Well, listen, all four of you will get a half an hour with me. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, lovely. Wow. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, let me write down the names then. Hold on. Thank you, Sandy. If you send, I've got Lori's name, so I know that. So we will make sure that um, Jen gets your information, Lori. Okay, although it so sounds we like also you have um, Jean Patterson. Okay. Oh, Jean. And we hey, have Jean. Ellen McDaniel. Hey, Ellen. And we also have Amber Schwartzkopf. Oh All right, goodness, Amber. Amber. Wonderful. You guys, and thank you, Jen. That was so generous of you. My goodness. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Well, everybody, this has been um, amazing, and we've all learned so much. Um, I can't thank Jen enough. I can't thank you, agents, enough for being so patient today and being here with us. Uh, Sandy, oh, my goodness, we love you. I'm not <laughs> sure if we could have even pulled this off without you today. So <laughs> thank, you, thank you. Thank you, my friend, for Always being here. Always my pleasure. Thank you for being here. I hope everybody has a great uh, rest of their week Indeed. and weekend. And uh, goodbye for now, everybody. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Bye, everyone.